Alright, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to start off with our face, so I'm using the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. Let me tell you, this stuff is amazing. It's gotten amazing reviews all over the internet, and I've really wanted to try it for a long time, so I finally gave in and bought it. It feels like you're wearing nothing, it's incredibly light, but it does an amazing job filling in your pores, keep makeup on, and making you look flawless. Next, I'm going to be taking an eye primer, putting this all over my eyes, and rubbing it in. I want to do this now so it has some time to dry before we actually put eyeshadow on. Next, I'm going to be taking this MAC foundation, which, let me tell you, I'm obsessed with. It is so good. I'm incredibly pale, and it can be very hard for me to find foundation that matches me, but when I went to MAC, they gave me the lightest foundation, of course but this is a special foundation that actually adapts to your skin once it's on it. This means that I can put this on, and while it is the lightest, it's still not a perfect match, but then it adapts so that it fits my skin perfectly. It doesn't look like I'm wearing that much makeup, but it still gives me a medium to full coverage. This stuff is amazing. I hope to use it forever, and it's my new holy grail of makeup. I would absolutely advise it for those of you who can buy it. Next, I'm going to be taking the darkest color on this concealer wheel and going under my cheekbones for a quick contour. It's okay if they're a little dark because we don't look like we've slept in a little while. After that, I'm going to be taking my NYX Matte But Not Flat Powder and powdering my entire face to set everything we just did. After that, I'm going to be taking this Gemma Kid Cream Blush in a little corally color and rubbing that all over my cheeks. After that, I'm going to be taking this black shadow and this silver shadow and doing my eyes. I'm going to start out with this flat packing brush and spread the silver shadow all over my eyes. Once I've done that, I'm going to be taking this round brush and the black shadow and making a cut crease and going into the outer corner of my eye. I decided that this wasn't quite dark enough for me, so I actually took my Maron cream paints and I did the same places as the shadow. Once I laid that down, I went in with the round brush again and the black shadow and blended everything out so it was all cohesive. After that, I lined my eyes with my favorite Made You Look Night Owl eyeliner in Haunted. And then I crimped my eyelashes to make them nice and curly and used my NYX Doll Eyed Mascara to give my eyelashes some volume. After that, I applied my falsies, put on your glue, let it sit for a minute and get tacky, and then apply those to your eyes. Once you've done that, apply another layer of mascara just to combine your natural lashes and your fake lashes. Next, I'm going to be taking the same flat brush and a nice red color and going underneath my eyes to make them look a little bloodshot like we haven't slept in a while. Then I'm going to be taking this gold jumbo pencil and applying that to the inner corners to brighten them up. This is it, haunted. Anyway, take that same eyeliner again and go ahead and line your lips. Take your time when you're doing black because black is the hardest color to fix up once it's on your lips. After that, I'm going to be taking a nice red lip gloss. This is thin. I think it's like rose, cherry rose, something. Cherry rose? Rose? Something? It's a lip gloss from Smashbox, is the point. And go ahead and put that all over your lips. This is an optional step, but I thought it would be nice to simulate the blood. Just for fun, you know. So cool like that. Okay, now for the fun part. Hang on a second. Gotta look up my reference photo. It's very important that I get this right. Nail scratches. On okay. Someone's 
his nail ripped off. I never wanted to see that. Anyway, go ahead and take a red lip liner and start etching out the scratches on your face. I found that nail scratches tend to be much thicker at one end where they sort of pierce the skin and drag it out and then they taper out to a thin point on the other end. They're actually not that deep and don't usually break the surface that much, but I chose to be a little on the dramatic side so I could use some extra flesh, so I did that anyway on the middle one. Next, go ahead and take the extra flesh. Look at this, it even has like little cotton pieces in it so that it's nice and fleshy. Realistically stringy. Isn't that great? It's great, right? great. Anyway, go ahead and lay that down on one side of the cut and then blend it out on the other side so that it's nice and flat. You want a raised surface on one side and a flat surface on the other. You want to make sure that while you're doing this, you either have Vaseline, makeup remover, or makeup remover wipes on hand to keep your hands very slick. If you don't do this, the extra flesh will actually stick to your fingers and you won't be able to put it to your face. Also, I actually tend to use makeup remover wipes to help blend out the edges. For the second cut, I just roll down a layer and then cut it open with a plastic knife. And I also use the plastic knife to taper the edges of the first cut. Now I'm going to be taking this blush in the pinky color and a crease brush and I'm going to irritate everywhere around the cut. I'm leaving an area close to the cut normally white as my skin so that gives it a nice raised look but I'm making everything else very irritated and pink. Then I'm going to be taking the darker red color and deepening up certain areas that I think need more definition. Next I'm going to be taking the flat brush and then the red color again and I'm going to be irritating that top cut. Here's the trick. Since the fingernail scratch is usually pretty mild and not as big as these two, I'm going over the top. Ooh, this top one needs to be kind of speckled, so the way I'm going to do that is I laid down a dark red eyeshadow, sort of speckled, and the way I'm going to make it look more speckled is using a stipple bunch of my foundation. You can pat that down so it doesn't look super weird and go over it slightly again with the red. Then I'm going to be taking that same red and going inside the two bottom cuts. Ha! <laughs> Cause I can never get enough of this, right? I'm going to be taking that dark brown and deepening up the middle cut. This is to make it more realistic and not quite as bright. Next I'm going to be taking my favorite coagulated blood and a Q-tip and sticking that into the end of the cut. You don't really want it where it's tapered, but in the deepest part of the cut, put in as much as you want. That's not true, you probably shouldn't put in that much, but I like it. And then... Okay, so it's a little ridiculous how quickly my camera keeps dying. So I had to do a little bit off camera, but it wasn't that much. All I did was include stage blood into the mix, so this is pure stage blood. I dabbed a little bit of stage blood on top of the top one, so it looks like in very small places it broke the skin. Then I had a little bit of blood coming from the edge of my mouth and a little bit from my nose. This is all stage blood. I was just starting to do my sad nose when I decided I just need to go for it. So all I'm doing here is making it look like a really fresh bruise using this slightly fluffy brush. There's better ways to do bruises. I don't have my bruise wheel with me right now, so I can't do them. But this is a very fresh one, so it's okay. I just dabbed a little bit of the redness on and I'm spreading that around more concentrated in the area where I'm pretending I got hit. Then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of purpley color and stipple that around there too. Number one thing I'm going to point out though is that you're going to want to use Fixative A on any extra flesh that you use. For me it's okay if I don't because I'm about to wipe this off anyway. Um, but for any, if you're ever going to wear this for really any time longer than like 5 minutes, make sure you have Fixative A. I do, it's just back at home with all the other makeup I didn't bring! Ah! So there you go, happy Black Friday. I hope you enjoyed this look. This is meant to be satirical. This is in no way a comment on people who go to Black Friday. But in order to do a sort of special effects look while still keeping with the season, I wanted to pretend that I'm a Black Friday shopper. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. It was a lot of fun to do. I hope you'll stay tuned for more. Please hit subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to check out my Instagram and Twitter at Eliza Dragon. Also, on that note, shortly after Thanksgiving, I'll be starting the 100 Days of Makeup Challenge on Instagram, where I post a new thing every day, so please follow me if you'd like to see what I do during that time. So, see you guys next time. Bye!